welcome to the Meyer Mobility Center. This is part of Bridge Disability Ministries, and the portion that we do happens to be durable medical equipment. So everything that we give out is donated, so all kinds of donations of durable medical equipment. Uh, we have a couple of other things we do besides that, and the durable medical equipment is the biggest piece, so I'll bring you on in and show you how we handle that when it arrives. Let's see, the first thing that we do is clean things up. So when we get it in, we bring it back here. And this is the area where we clean things up. And we're getting ready to bring in several other pieces. So where I am standing over here will become a hub scrub machine. And that will be used to clean a lot of the equipment other than the power equipment. And it sort of acts like a car wash, only for durable medical equipment. Then we'll have a uh, stackable washer and dryer here, so it gives us a place to clean our shop rags or wash up uh, cushion covers and that kind of thing. And then we'll have a big sink so that we can test out whether or not our, um, some of our inflatable wheelchair cushions, our Rojo cushions, will hold air or not. And then this is the area where we will continue to wash things that need to be hand, hand washed. Um, once we have everything washed, we spray it with disinfectant and then we move it to an area just to let it dry. So it sets here and dries and waits, uh, waits for somebody in the shop to come out and pick it up. And we have a little system that just involves twist, twisting ties, little green ties that we'll put on things and that tells people in the shop this has been washed. So if things start to get really busy, we've got a way of knowing this has been washed, but it hasn't been put into inventory, or this hasn't been washed, and we still need to do everything to it. Um, right now, you see things like Hoyer slings dripping dry, but we can get anything in here. Once we have washed it, one of our many fine volunteers comes out and gets it, it's our shop area. And these are three of our tremendous volunteers. They come to us with all kinds of different experiences. Volunteer number one has owned his own business. He's been an equipment business for a long time. Um, kind of heavy duty construction type of equipment. Uh, volunteer number two here, um, working on this transport chair comes to us with an engineering background from Boeing and volunteer number three here happens to have been a farmer all his life from Iowa and he comes to us knowing how to even build machinery um, starting from scratch and just working with metal so they know something about equipment and so they help us test things out see what they need and then we can move forward from there. Um, we have a lot of parts in here, and we have parts in rooms further back as well. These are the smaller pieces of parts, and we've also got uh, in the back a lot of cushions, a lot of backs, a lot of leg rests, a lot of tires. Well, we did get a volunteer who said, I'll buy you all the materials and build your shelving for you. So, thanks to a volunteer. We have all this, so he bought about $500 worth of building supplies and put up our shelves for us. And then this room, we have tires, seat cushions, backrests down there. There's all kinds of different types of footrests, so we need to know, or leg rests, and we need to know what based on the type of chair, it will take a different type of leg rest. So it's always a chore to have enough of every different size. Um, but as the equipment comes in, if, we, if it's not workable, we can always find parts off of it. And so instead of buying parts, you take parts off of something that one piece, you know, it's not a workable piece, but you can get plenty of parts and then 
just tuck them away and use them later. Okay, well once we do that, you know, once two people have checked it out and they're satisfied with it, then they put an inventory tag on it. So this will tell us, you know, what type of piece of equipment it is and when somebody comes in and we give it out to them, then we pull the tag off and then later on we can remove it from our inventory as fulfilled. around here gosh we just try to make use of as much space as we can and the inventory fluctuates up and down it's sort of strange to think but sometimes I don't have any shower chairs right now I must have 15 shower chairs there I don't know at least maybe a dozen shower chairs usually I'm out of transfer benches I have a transfer bench here right now those are very hard to come by um, and one of the reasons is because Medicare and Medicaid don't pay for shower benches, transfer benches, commodes, the sorts of things that um, are connected with just hygiene, I guess you would say. Um, and then there are a few other things they don't want to cover, like transport wheelchairs. So those are things that are hard to come by because they're not covered by insurance, so people tend to hold on to them. And so you hope for those donations, but oftentimes, you know, sometimes you have a lot, sometimes just a few. And we try to keep track of where, you know, try to keep things in one particular area. So wheelchairs are going here. Um, just the folding wheelchairs go here. We have four wheel walkers that we keep down below. We have the bathing equipment up there. Down here we have uh, specialty wheelchairs, tilt and space wheelchairs, which are more valuable, but don't move as fast. And so we just try to keep a range of as many things as we can. Okay, we're ready to stick that away. Huh? Okay. Uh, let's see, in terms of volunteer hours, I'll just bring you over here and show you our little spot on the wall where we Hope for volunteers. So we have, a, we have a little display here when people walk in the door. We have a quote from Anne Frank. How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. And in terms of the number of volunteer hours that are donated to our center for the year for all the things we do, we've had over 10,000 volunteer donated last year. And out of that, in our mobility center, over 2,000 volunteer hours. And I keep a, you know, we keep a sign up here that lets people know we can't do what we do unless we have volunteers. I have a little list of things that we can give out. They want to know, well, what do you do if you are going to volunteer? So we try to come up with a, a good range of job descriptions to tell them, what do we do? Um, I just had one of my volunteers show me our, say, well, be sure and tell him about our, our notebook that we have. So when we bring people in, we do have a notebook that tells them about different types of pieces of equipment. So we have something on, oh, about 20 or 25 different pieces of equipment from grab bars to toilet rails to Hoyer lifts to manual and transport wheelchairs and power wheelchairs and that sort of thing. Um, you can come on back this way if you'd like. So, um, yeah, we just try to get every piece used. In January, I didn't have any commodes. I must have two dozen commodes now. I've got every year's commode. All this up here and over behind you, and there are different, you know, all kinds of different commodes. There's drop arm commodes and bariatric commodes and just the regular ones. But uh, another thing we do is uh, we decide if people have something to donate, they, we want them to be able to just bring it to one place and donate it. So we have six other um, nonprofits that we work with sometimes more but if somebody comes in and they have a knee brace that they are no longer using 
and they don't want it thrown away because it's expensive and it can help someone. Or if they have a half open package of um, adult absorbent pants, um, they can bring that in if it's bandages. Um, we've had people bring in a couple of oxygen concentrators, all kinds of nutrition supplements and feeding tube uh, supplies, all of that. Anything that's a medical supply, we pretty much say, yes, you can bring it in. And then we throw it in these boxes. And when the time comes and we think we can fill up a van, for one of the other nonprofits, we call them up and say, bring in your van, and once or twice a month, we completely fill somebody's van, front to back, floor to ceiling, and away they go. And we will do that to the tune of over $300,000 worth of medical supplies that will go through here this year in addition to the equipment that goes through. So we'll put through about 2,500 pieces of durable medical equipment and it'll be worth in retail value about a million to, to a million five. And all that we do for about $100,000 through here is our budget for the year. So we are able to get back into the community about $15 for every dollar that is put in. So um, it should, you know, it's quite a help. To, to people that need equipment. Um, and I don't know if you feel like you need to just film our little area for canes, crutches, walkers, and raised toilet seats and grab bars, but there we have it. Okay, um, we don't have any requirement for the people that come in. So if they come in and they have no money at all, they get what they need. And we ask for donations wherever people can help us. Other people come in and they really do have um, plenty of funds. And they're here because they just believe in what we do. So they come in and they're happy to donate. And so we don't care if we're giving it out to somebody that drives up in a Mercedes or somebody that drives up in a 1990 beat up pickup. Um, because the person that comes in on a Mercedes simply believes in what we do and they'll give us a donation that will help us do that for the person that can't afford anything. So we don't, you know, we don't have any kind of requirement for proof of income or anything like that. The people that have income will help us and the people that don't have income, we really don't want to put them through a process that just emphasizes the fact that they don't have anything. We feel it's best to just go ahead and give it out and it's, you know, they don't have to feel bad just because they don't have anything. They don't have to apologize for being here. They don't want that. Uh, so we get a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails. This is our little office in here. Um, on a good day, I have a volunteer to help me out in the office, like Chris here. And on days that I don't, I fall behind. So, you know, I think nobody can ever keep up with all the demand that there is in the world for the kinds of things we do. And if anybody ever is able to keep up with it, then I'm interested to know how, um, because we can't. So you have to feel good about what you can do as opposed to feeling bad what, about what you can't do. It's important to just be thankful to God that you can do what you can do and try to do more all the time, but not feel bad about the fact that you can't help everyone that calls. Sometimes you just don't have enough resources, so you do everything you can with what you have. 